How to say hello in Japanese? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> I can't. Konnichiwa. Frank Sun is making beef negamaki. And if you guys actually watched my YouTube channel more and you know maybe you liked the video and shared it around, I would have a lovely Asian half white half Japanese goddess making this for me so I wouldn't have to do it. Or at least she would be behind the camera. So uh until we get some Mulan looking girl. Guys, I know, it's a joke. I know Mulan is Chinese. Until we get some Mulan looking girl over here. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, but let's get started. As usual, every ingredient is as high quality as possible. Starting with the main attraction, our 100% grass-fed flank steak from Frankie's Street Range Meat. Almost every beef negamaki recipe calls for flank steak, so that's what we will be using. We have some organic scallions, AKA green onions. And then the rest of the ingredients are in the marinade. And there is some variation when you look up different recipes. Of course, we have done some substitutions to make it healthier, such as coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. We're using organic coconut oil instead of toasted sesame oil. And that's a big one because that stuff can be really, really inflammatory, but we do have regular sesame seeds that we will toast and garnish with. We have some of the Himalayan pink salt from Frankie's Syringe Meat. We have some local honey. And two things you... This fucking thing keeps falling. I'm not performing the best balancing act today. Now, two things you might not have are... <laughs> this fucking thing. I'm losing my mind. It's, you can stay there. Knocked over. Now, two things you might not have are sake and mirin. Sake being a Japanese rice wine and mirin being a Japanese rice seasoning. And if you look on the ingredients here, it's stuff you're not going to typically have. We did find some organic mirin online. And the sake, I just went to the local liquor store and bought some Dai Ginjo, which means they polished the rice the highest amount, which means it's going to be the least inflammatory, the highest quality. Uh, you can't really substitute this stuff for something else because it does give it a very specific flavor. But let's get started. So we're going to start off by blanching our scallions. And I plan on using mostly the bottom. So I'm going to chop off the top half. So we'll just put our scallions in the boiling water. The beef gets grilled, so we need to soften these up if we're going to be able to eat them. And in this pan over here, I'm just going to put some of our sesame seeds to toast. Now we don't have an ice bath, so we're only going to do about 45 seconds. Okay. So we got our green onions cooling off on a towel. We're just going to put these on the side. Sesame seeds just on a medium, medium high heat until they get a little bit of brown on them like that. Now we're gonna mix the marinade real quick so that we can reduce half of it into a glaze while we are prepping the meat. So we need half a cup of sake, half a cup of mirin, about a third of a cup of our coconut aminos, two tablespoons of honey, then we're gonna do a tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of oil, then we're gonna crush and peel two cloves of garlic. And we're gonna mix this up to make sure the honey and the salt is incorporated into everything else. So half of this marinade is gonna go in a small pan on a medium heat. We're gonna reduce this into a glaze that we can put on the negamaki after it's done. So this is gonna sit on the stove top for 10, 15 minutes. Now you're supposed to leave the meat in the freezer a little bit to firm it up so it's easier to slice thinly, but I didn't exactly sharpen my knife either, so we're kind of just winging this. And honestly, just go to your local H Mart. They have some beef sliced really thin. Try this recipe out, even though it's grain-fed beef. So maybe if you do really like it, then you know next time around you can start doing the grass-fed yourself, but th this is a lot of the work of the recipe. So the flank steak, you can see the grain really, really easily. We're just gonna Slice in half. Well, did you know that on Frankie syringe meat, this is actually two flank steaks. So we separated the flank steaks, we cut them in half. We're gonna cut them in half the other way. So we have a nice base to slice from. So this is you know, a lot more manageable to slice somewhat thin pieces. I would say about a quarter inch thick. I think if you go any thinner than that, uh, the meat might start falling apart when we go to pound it. However, those short Asian girls with those tall white dudes don't seem to uh, fall apart 
from the pounding, so go figure. So we have our meat mallet, just gonna be gentle. And we're just gonna pound this to about half of the original thickness. We're not doing some like paper thin veal or chicken cutlets or anything like that. We just want a nice base to roll our scallions in. Now, if you wanna get Michelin star with your nagamaki, you can you know, grab your knife and start doing all sorts of geometrical shapes, but um, we're keeping it simple today. Our glaze is reducing nicely on the stove. So I'm gonna finish pounding these out, guys, and we'll see you in a second. Uh, so we pounded out maybe half a pound of steak. Uh, I'm just gonna take the rest of this and put it in a towel. Uh, I'll either grill it later or make some more negamaki. Uh, if you guys don't know about this, it's kind of like the best way to put meat away in the fridge, uh, just a dry, clean cotton towel. So now we have our scallions. So here I'm gonna line the scallions up by the bottom root and just barely chop that off. And then we're gonna do one more chop where they start turning green. And then we're gonna even those green tops out in case we need some extra ones. The green part can be kind of chewy and grassy, so I prefer to use the white part, but as you can see, you know, most of the scallion is not the white. But the scallions are really cheap, like a dollar or two a bunch, so if you want, you can just buy a lot of them and then only have the white. Wouldn't be a bad idea to put some uh, beef stock in this glaze too, to be honest. So we have everything ready, our beef, our onions, marinade is over there, and some toothpicks to keep everything together. I've had these in restaurants a few times, that's how I found out about it, and I, I find they always put way too much green onion compared to beef. You know, like you're still chomping on onions after you're done chewing the beef, so we're gonna do maybe two of these per roll. And then we're just gonna take our toothpick. And go through to keep it together. Same thing, two green onions. Roll up the meat. Did we lose one? We didn't actually lose one, but you'll notice if you squeeze the onions a little too much, the inside can kind of pop out. So just put it back in can't put the Asian girl's punani back together like that as easily, but uh, I'm sure they have some surgeries for that now. Now, usually in the restaurant, the beef will be a lot longer and they'll put more green onions in it so the pieces end up a lot larger, but this is way easier to do. I'll do one more for you guys. Two green onions, roll up the beef, take our toothpick and just go through everything. So we're just checking on the glaze here. It has Reduced mostly. You could go thicker and get like a kind of a syrup, but uh, this is a perfect consistency. Very, very floral, very fragrant. You can tell all the, the sugars and everything is kind of concentrated and melded together. All right, so we have all the beef done. Now we're gonna put it in our marinade. Uh, this is probably enough marinade for a pound, so we definitely have some extra in here. So we got our beef in here. Half hour, an hour. That's plenty of time for this marinade. Now I do use plastic wrap, however, I make sure that it does not come into contact with the food. So we'll see you guys. Hopefully I have a stroke from working so hard making this godforsaken recipe. And we don't have to finish it. Now I wasn't planning on cooking out here because it's so dark, but look how bright this flashlight is, guys. Holy shit. It's so bright. Oh wait, is the battery dead? So my main grill is out of commission because the grates are really rusted. I got to burn that off. But I got this little Coleman grill as a gift. It's like this portable thing and it runs on this butane. So maybe not the healthiest heat source, but I'm going to try it out. So we have our nagamaki here all marinated. I just have a plate over here to put them on when they're done. Yo, this flashlight is just overheating so much. Yo, I don't know what's hotter, the grill or this flashlight. <laughs> well, my flashlight overheated, so we're gonna use my phone light for a little bit. I don't like how they design these grates. Like, isn't the point of using a grill to get gas flavor? Why is it mostly like a plancha? 
But these uh, cook really quick, guys, because it's, it's just that thin, pounded out layer of beef wrapped around the scallion. So it shouldn't be more than two or three minutes on each side. I mean, in hindsight, if we used the other grill for these, we would have uh, blasted them in about five seconds. Well, now that our new grill's a mess, the negamaki is done. Pow! <laughs> okay, not my finest grill work, but uh, we're working with limited equipment. The end is near, so we have our nicely grilled negamaki. We're going to take the toothpicks out and plate them up. Bro, I am not cut out for this bullshit. That's fucking ridiculous. I can't even... This is why, like, I'm not artistic at all. I can't even get a piece of fucking cylindrical beef to stand up on itself. Oh, my God. So you brought about as dexterous as a dead fucking chicken. I can't even wipe the plate without knocking all this shit over. So we have our five negamaki plated up. So the glaze that we had on the stove top thickened up quite a bit, as you guys could see. So this we're going to spoon on top. Make a little mess on the outside of the plate to make up for our uh, own mess. And then we have our toasted sesame seeds. Sprinkle some of these on top. Hey, trust the process, right? Somewhat presentable. I mean, regardless of how good this tastes, I doubt I will ever be making this again. Same with those Chinese dumplings. It's just, it's just so much work. It's so much work. Way better than the restaurant. Way better. Way better. The beef to scallion ratio is on point. You have a nice sweetness in the glaze. The grass-fed beef has a great depth of flavor. I think this is uh, another one of those dishes that kids will really like because of the sweetness. Nice grill flavor. Overall, guys, very, very delicious. I think the meat can be seasoned a little bit more, some more salt, and uh, maybe the scallions can also be uh, maybe poached in some salted water, but overall, it's excellent. I think with a little refinement and uh, a lighter touch, uh, you can make something that looks just as good as it tastes. So you guys can go to Frankie's Strange Meat where you'll find the flank steak. Uh, we got the salt on there too. And I think for the most part, that's everything in this recipe that I have. And if you guys do want to support my other businesses, they are all on frank-stefano.com. But as always, guys, please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.